Hi, good morning everyone. Let's get started with the next topic for this training which is authorization checks in SAP. Okay, in this topic what we are going to do is we are going to look into the process of the different authorization checks, the steps which are involved. So whenever a user starts any transaction, the system performs the following check. First thing what happens is system checks in the table TSTC whether the transaction code is valid or not that is the first check and whether the administrator has locked the transaction or not so that is the first check that is it will go into the table called TSTC and will find out the information whether the T code is valid or not and after that well, if the T code is valid it will check whether it is locked or not okay then the system checks whether the user has the authorization to start the transaction so it will go into the pfcg and check whether the roles which is required to perform that particular transaction is assigned to the users or not okay so basically these are the two main steps which happens okay so so these are the two main steps that is happening here first step tstc validation validating whether the user is locked or not second step is going into the system finding out whether the user has the required roles or not and so let's get into one of the program and we will see how the validation checks is is taking place so what i am going to do is i am going to connect to a table called tstc and want to show you guys how this table looks like and what are the fields present in this particular table. So now I have started the transaction called TSTC. System is compiling and will be presenting you the table information that is which are the fields which are present and once we execute it, it will give the information about the data which is present in that particular table. Okay, so compiling takes some time and depending on whether the that particular T code is compiled before or not. Okay, so T code is getting compiled and we will be seeing the information about the TSTC. Okay, the next thing is the authorization object S underscore T code. So this contains the field TCD. So the user must have an authorization with a value for the selected T code. Okay, so that is the second check that we found is the user should have the authorization for the T code. Basically, he should have those roles. Okay, and to create a custom transaction, we can go to AC93. Okay, so that is, and if we assign it to AC93, the user requires a table defined authorization object, which we can see it to TSTA. Okay, so and if you create a transaction in AC93, you can assign an additional authorization to this transaction. This is useful if you want to be able to protect a transaction with a separate authorization. Okay, if this is not the case, you should consider using other methods to protect the transaction that is authority check at program level. So we have seen four things. One thing is to validate whether the information is there in the TSTC table or not. Okay, if it is a valid T code, it will be checked whether the user has the role to perform that particular transaction or not. That is the authorization object S underscore T code should have the field T code, the transaction that he wants to perform. Third thing is about the custom T code. So custom T code, how do we create? We create it using AC93. And where they are stored, they are stored in the table called TSTCA. And to perform complex t transactions, we can go to authorization check in the program itself. Okay, so basically, the check is not performed in the below cases. Say for example, you have deactivated the check for authorization object for the transaction. Say using SU24, there is a way you can deactivate the checks. Okay, so if the check is deactivated, the check for the objects from SAP NetWeaver and HR area. 
so in those cases it will not be checked so so that is one case where the authorization will not be checked okay this can be help, useful as a large number of authorization objects say if you have tons of authorization object it will slow down the performance of your system so that is pretty important because if you are not performing a uh, role redesigning pr properly basically your role should reflect the org structure or your role should be designed based on the company structure based on the hierarchical structure so there are a couple of methods you can use to redesign your roles and if there are tons of roles it may slow down the performance of your system which may not be acceptable to the users so that is pretty important that you should design your roles properly okay so that is about the two cases where the authorization objects basically the authorization checks are not performed and we can do it through the su24 so we will be seeing in our subsequent training how su24 works and what information is customized using su24 okay and we also saw that we can eliminate the tons of or the larger number of authorization object from getting checked every time user perform certain activity because that activity it's it's good that we should have checked at every stage but too much of check is also harmful so that is where as we mentioned is the role redesigning comes into picture so we should be designing the role in such a way that you are not putting all the objects one by one into check so basically we can club the roles together and we can deactivate the authorization checks for certain objects using su24 okay and you can deactivate it basically su24 and 25 goes hand in hand we'll be seeing in our subsequent slide how su24 looks like and what for su25 is used for okay so now let's see the table related authorization okay so basically the table related authorization object is s underscore t a b u underscore d i s okay so that is the object and for the programs the authorization check is basically it should have the act vt03 as the value for activity that is the activity and the statement checks the user buffer of the person executing the program say for example when you log into the system what happens is that you will get the buffer the security buffer is allocated to you and based on that buffer you will have the objects stored in your in your uh, pc so here i am giving a small example where you can see this is the place where you have and from 493 onwards you have these three key fields one is the authorization check object is s underscore user group then the second line shows that in class dummy and third line is about the activity field which is gc underscore act 03 so these are the three key fields so wherever we want to incorporate or add the checks additional checks we can use these three key lines three key rows to customize to control the authorization at any level okay so that is where the users can define custom authorization okay so basically depending on the content of the user buffer the statement might return different values so for example if a user has a buffer and if it returns a value zero that indicates it's a successful check that is user can log in to the system to perform the transaction that is the validation is successful okay so that is what actually uh I wanted to cover so what we have seen so far 
in these slides is the moment the user connects to the SAP system, a security buffer is allocated to him. That buffer contains different checks. First check is about the valid T code. Second check is about whether the T code is locked or not. Third check is about whether that is a custom T code or not. And fourth check is about the authority checks basically at a program level okay and fifth check is about the objects which have been deactivated from being performing the security related uh, checks and fourth sixth check is about the table fields okay so these are pretty much the different checks different level of security checks which are performed whenever a user logs in into the system and that's pretty much I wanted to cover in this particular training session. So based on this I think you got the idea the steps which is involved in performing SAP checks in authorization. Thank you for joining and have a nice day. Bye bye.